Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. I thank God for the privilege to be able to share with you today. Today is um, Wednesday, July the 21st, and the title of today's Daily Devotional is Don't Be Worldly. Now, the Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, <clears throat> Pastor E. A. R. Deboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, or if you know me personally, you may be asking, us, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Well, because there are so many great daily devotionals, Christian daily devotionals out there. But, well, as I prepare to enter into the year 2020, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on YouTube, to be very specific. And I was able to start that assignment in the month of June. 2020 i'm, I'm I address uh, you know addressing that introduction to people that know me who might be wondering why are you sharing this particular daily devotional and by the grace of god i was able to start that assignment in the month of june 2020 i shared the devotional not only in the month of june but also in the month of uh, august october december 2020 and in this year 2021 i resumed sharing in the month of march in may in, i'm sharing now in july and I'm going to be sharing in the subsequent months of 2021 by the grace of God. God who called me is faithful and he will do it. Now, very good question is, how did I get to know Pastor Adeboye? Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, many years ago when I was in the University of Lagos in Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor Adeboye's style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures to read. He'll give you a memory verse. And when you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the spirit of god is saying to us as individuals to the body of christ and to the world in general amen amen praise god and the bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for correction for reproof and for instruction in righteousness amen praise god now today the topic of today is very very important it says don't be worldly and it's talking to the christians don't be worldly and uh, the scriptural reading is taken from the book of 1 John 2, 15 to 17, just three verses. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. And thus goes the reading of God's word. It's just three verses, but I want to read it from not only the traditional King James Version, but also from the New Living Translation. And that will help you to understand it better. So from the King James, thus goes the reading of God's word. It says, love not the world. Neither the things that in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And in the name of Jesus, I choose to do the will of God so that I can abide forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me read that. Those three scriptures in the New Living Translation. And it says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving of, for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we can see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fade, fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Amen. So he says we should not love the world. You know, eh, he's talking to Christians, you know, that, you know, <laughs> you're a Christian. And, you know, they really cannot tell the difference between you and the people who are not saved. <clears throat> you know, they, you, you still party the same way. You still do the same, the, the, you know. It really, until you tell people that you are a Christian, they won't know. And, you know, God is at his, God is where now, where he is. is want to make a difference between those who serve him and those who serve him. No, but, you know, uh, Christians are looking more like people in the world, doing the things that are in the, of people in the world. Some people in the world are like, ah, even me, I don't dress like that. You know, so... Um, he says, um, the, what is in the world? What is in the world? The love of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He says, a craving for physical 
pleasure um a craving for what everything we see some people look at people's husbands and think i want that man or somebody looks at somebody's wife and says i want that man you know that man looks and sees a young girl has a wife at home he wants that girl you know he's a craving for things that we can see and then pride in our achievements and our possessions we think that oh i have a million dollars in my bank account so i can talk to anybody anyhow you know i did this i have a phd in this and i have a phd in that and you know pride in our achievements and our possessions um not knowing that a, li a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses love not the world you know uh, uh, the the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life Again, this, the memory verse is taken from the scriptures we read in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world. The pastor says that in today's memory verse, Paul enjoins us not to love the world and warns that we cannot love God and the world at the same time. He urges further that we should not engage in the works of darkness as listed in Ephesians 5, verses 4, 5, and 12, which reads, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient for you know that no homemonger no unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater had an inheritance in the kingdom of christ and of god for it is even a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret so he's saying that you know these are the things that people in the world do and that they should not even be named among christians you know, Paul was talking about how he should not even be named among Christians, that a man has his father's wife. You know, he should not even be named among Christians, that the a Christian has gotten somebody, you, you, you know, we hear some horrible story that those things should not be, it should not be happening in the body of Christ at all, you know. And he says, why, however, why, however, are there thieves in the congregations of the churches today? Why are harlots in the choir? Why are extramarital affairs now commonplace among believers? The answer is simple. Worldliness has become the order of the day. The get-rich-quick spirits hold this sway among believers who have forgotten Paul's counsel to be content with whatever they have. As per 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 to 11. This, the end justifies the means philosophy growing in the church today is contrary to the word of God that says everyone shall give account for his or her actions. Romans 14, 12. Sometimes uh, you find in some churches that they tend to celebrate those people that give a lot of money, give them more attention, more, you know, um, they, are, they, are, they are like giving, they are, they, 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 the preacher gives them more attention because they have money, you know. Uh, and that's not how it's supposed to be. Everybody is equal in church. You love everybody the same way. But because the man is always spraying money around, you know, they, they, they give him the front seat, they give him attention, and then all the others are just... You know, um, you, you, you see, some people, some people will come into church and look at what the choir members are wearing and like, ah, even me that I'm not born again, I don't even dress like this, you know, uh, there must be a difference, you know, um, um, some people, <laughs> some people still, you know, ro uh, uh, do business deals, they say they are Christians and then they, they dupe the person that they are doing business with and they say they are Christians, then they bring the money to the house of God and think that they can bribe money. You bribe God with their money. And the Bible says uh, their, their money perish with them, you know. Um, so why? Pastor says, how can, how can that be happening in the body of Christ? It's because the world has come into the church. God forbid. Pastor says, another reason for the growth of worldliness in the church today is that the children of light have made our places of worship comfortable for evildoers. Many believers are now living lives of dead, deadly compromise. Integrity is now considered old school. Integrity is now considered old school, you know, and, um, you know, there's no punishment. You may be dating somebody's husband, but you're still leading choir in church. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I know where, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, well, we've heard of stories where the pastor has conducted a wedding for a man who has a wife at home and he's married somebody in church, you know. And then he has a wife at home and somebody's conducting a wedding for him in church with another woman. How is that post? How is that? What has happened? Worldliness has come into the church, you know. Um, pastor says, how can we change the situation? The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 7 to 8, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. 
for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. If you find yourself in that kind of assembly well, where um, uh, unrighteousness is allowed to run free, you, you, you shouldn't be there. You need to move as quickly as possible by the Spirit of God. You know, move away from there. Um, the Bible in Romans 13 verses 12 to 14 also says, The night is fast spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lost dear. That's in Romans 13 verses 12 to 14. You know, and I, I memorized that scripture in the Amplified Classic, the classic Translation. It says, clutch yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires and its loss. And sometimes, you know, as you're reading the Bible, you find a scripture that you, you really want to implement in your life. Begin to speak it. Because I say to myself that I have clothed myself with the Lord Jesus Christ. I refuse to make any provision for the flesh in Jesus' name. I put a stop to thinking about the evil cra cravings of my physical nature to gratify its desires and its loss. You know, I, I, I confess that scripture every time. Pastor then says, henceforth, let us walk as children of light, Ephesians 5, 8, and separate ourselves from every form of worldliness. May the second coming of the Lord not catch us on our ways in Jesus' name. You know, if you find people like that in church, they are so worldly, you know, um, they are carnally minded. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Don't be friends with them. Come out from amongst them and be separate. Do not touch the unclean thing. Do not compromise. You know, the, the Bible talks about us being the uncompromisingly righteous. We are one of those people who do not sell our birthright for a morsel of meat. Don't join the multitude to do evil. Amen. As the, the, the children of Israel, you know, joined the mixed multitude. Separate yourself from them. You are a child of God. You are. We are washed in the blood. We are washed we are sanctified, we are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do not touch the unclean thing. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue to press towards the goal of the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I refuse to be worldly in Jesus' name. I refuse to be worldly. And you should also confess that in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, our prayer point is this. Father, please grant me the grace to be vigilant. That the day of the Lord will not catch me unawares in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please grant us the grace to be vigilant that the day of the Lord will not catch us unawares in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your grace. The grace to stand perfect and complete in all the will of God by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for myself and my hearers that you help us, almighty God that we will be vigilant in the name of Jesus Christ so that we are not caught on our ways, that the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ will not catch us on our ways. Help us to prepare and arise. Help us, Almighty God, to be separate and not to touch the unclean thing in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm praying that even now you will wash us and sanctify us with your precious blood and help us not to compromise and remain steadfast and rooted and abide in our Lord Jesus Christ till your coming. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this was not too long and I hope it blessed you. Um, so if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, please do subscribe. Please tap the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you're aware. And please drop me a comment. And may God bless you exceedingly. And thank you, thank you for visiting my channel. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And may the Lord bless you exceedingly in Jesus name. Amen.